Welcome everybody. Um, we're going to wait a minute for more of you to get on. We're almost at capacity, I see. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think we can start. So welcome. Uh, I'm really glad and kind of amazed at how many of you are signed up and uh, we'll see it in one form or another. When I originally decided to do this, I expected a few hundred people and it turns out there's over 5,000 of you. And for me, it's just a testament to how much we're all craving uh, some way to stay connected and stay in self. And so that's a lot of what uh, the goal is for me um, in this crazy time. We've never been through anything like this. and. So there are going to be parts that feel terribly out of control and, and scared. And, and then we've all got parts that react to that and, and so on. So we'll be talking more about what's going on and uh, at, at various levels. This has been an interesting time for me to try and play with some ideas. And I'll be sharing some of that with you. But I also want to, uh, as I say, help us feel more connected as a community. And this is gonna be the first of a series of these free chats, I guess is the word for them. Um, I think next week, Tony Herbine Blank's gonna do one and I'll do some more and maybe we'll get other people to do some too so that we can maintain this connection within our community uh, and also help each other access self, which, uh, is really hard in times like this. And so that's another of my goals for tonight. And, but also, particularly if you can access himself, to be able to follow the trailheads that are uh, in your face right now, the, the beliefs and emotions and, and thoughts and impulses that uh, this, triggering situation has, uh, is bringing to you and allowing this situation to be what we often call a tormentor in that by tormenting you, it's, it's teaching you, it's mentoring you. So the hyphen between the tor and the mentor about what needs to be healed. And uh, so we wanna do some of that also uh, at least give you the opportunity to do that if you can. And then in general, to try to bring more self to the world because it needs it. Uh, it's my conviction that this is a wake up call for us personally. We'll talk more about that, but it's also a wake up call for the planet and for uh, a lot of countries and corporations and so on. So, uh, and that wake up call won't be heeded unless there's a lot of self present. And, and uh, you may not believe this, but I, I, I believe in my bones that the more we can access self, the more it ripples up and uh, leaders at all levels start to access more. And there's a desperate need for that now. So, that's another of my goals. Okay, so shortly I'll, I'll lead a kind of meditation uh, to get us started. And, uh, but in the meantime, you know, we're just really curious about which parts carry the fear and then which parts are trying to manage that fear and how they're trying to do that. And then this is, uh, a great time to notice the parts of you that had been driving your life and whether or not you want them to continue and want them to continue dominating. And then, then finally, what it's like when you don't have the distractions you used to have, what it's like to, to have everything shut down so that uh, you really can't be dominated by those same parts. 
at least they'll, they'll try hard to do it, but it's really harder, much harder for them too. And so what comes up when you're really taken out of this context for an extended period, I'm reminded actually, uh, when I met my wife, Jean, which I, now I think it's about 12 years ago, she was, she had been living in Manhattan for 20 years. And at some point I convinced her to move at least temporarily to St. Louis where I was working at the time. And she did. And while St. Louis, the suburbs of St. Louis, it's quite a contrast to Manhattan and it wasn't the best fit for her. She did start to notice once she got away from all the frantic activity that she was constantly bombarded, that she, that she turns out to be one of these highly sensitive people who uh, was in shutdown a lot of the time just to live in Manhattan to make it. But she didn't notice that until she really got away for a period of time and could ha access some of the parts that were being exiled just to protect her in Manhattan. And, uh, and you know, made a conviction not to live in that kind of context anymore. So the parallel I'm making is that we can't do what we used to be doing, what we've been doing for a long time now. And it's an interesting time to notice what that's like. And if indeed we get access to parts we didn't before. And, and also, if without the distractions, our exiles are coming up in a way that's, that's scary. So my goal is to help us play with all that today, both through talking about it like I am now, but also through some uh, meditations and exercises. So without further ado, let me invite you to take a second and focus inside and uh, just notice if you can, the parts that have been around the last couple of weeks. So both the, the scared, maybe exiles, who are fear, fearful about your future, about the disease itself maybe, or about the consequences to your career or your, your family, your job, and some of those fears are real. But just maybe notice those parts and any other parts that are trying to distract you from those fears or trying to minimize. Deny. or are sort of chiming in on the fears. So we're just gonna take a second to notice what's happening in the way of thoughts and emotions and impulses and sensations too. We're just taking a kind of inventory And if it's possible, as you notice these parts, let them know that, let them know that you see them. You care about them. It may not be possible at this point, you may be too blended with them or you may be blended with parts that are afraid of them or hate them or some other feeling toward them. And that's fine for now. But if it is possible, we're going to just extend that comforting message that you see them, 
and you care about them. And just see how they receive that. And tell them we're going to do some more with them tonight. And again, there's no pressure. I mean, if, if they're not willing to separate enough to see them or, or uh, to let you help them, that's understandable and it's fine. Um, but for now, come on back. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more. Uh, I actually wrote a paper which put together a lot of my thoughts about this. And I like it and I don't remember <laughs> it enough to not have to read it. So I'm gonna read some of my thoughts now. And then shortly after that, we'll do another little exercise. Okay. So, most of us are therapists, I suspect, and we've all had clients who were dominated by striving, individualistic, materialistic parts that, but that by certain measures had helped them achieve a lot of success in their lives. And uh, we might call them narcissistic or some other label like that. Most of mine were the spouses, the partners of my clients who were feeling neglected by those high powered, uh, sometimes executives or other kinds of people. And those kinds of people generally won't change regardless of the obvious collateral damage to their bodies, to their other parts, to their relationships with the spouse who was my client. Uh, they, they typically won't change until something really bad happens. And the, the same is true for countries because they become dominated by similar striving, materialistic uh, parts. And then they, as a country, ignore the damage to the majority of the people in the country, to the health of the client, the climate, and to the planet, to the earth. So like those driven clients, the economies of, of most countries in the world are based on unrestrained growth, just like uh, the individual's goals are unrestrained, un, unrestrained growth. And like in both cases, when you're dominated by those kinds of insatiable striving parts, usually does bring on some kind of a crash. Uh, just the domination of those parts will lead to that. So, and that crash can be, if, if used right, a wake up call, a life changing kind of event for an individual and can also be a big change for a country. So for a type A people, it might be the survival of heart attack, the divorce, or hitting bottom with the addiction that they've needed to keep all their other parts exiled. <clears throat> with a country, it's wars, economic depressions, plagues, or climate, climate crises, and all of which are the product of the obsessions they've had with unlimited growth. Such events can shock the system to the point that the beliefs that have been driving it are questioned and the costs of the mindless striving becomes more evident to the system at any of those levels. So this pandemic is going to cause immense pain and suffering, it already has, but ideally it'll force us to individually reconsider who we are and what we value and also do the same for us collectively as a country. 
and as a planet. So it could be a wake up call that heals human systems at many different levels. For example, um, now that countries have stopped polluting and forced to stop polluting, the earth has begun to heal fairly quickly. Uh, right now, pollution is way down, and uh, I read where fish are back in the canals of Venice, for example. So ecosystems have a way to self-heal, and they'll, if given half a chance, they can do that. So it would be nice if at the planetary level we were heed this wake-up call, and then we wouldn't need a much bigger one down the road. And, um, you know, that, that is kind of inevitable if we keep going the way we're going. But to use the wake-up calls, we have to access more self, again, at all these different levels. And that's hard to do right now because many of us have blended with the scared parts. And with that, this event is so survival threatening that it's natural for those parts to get triggered. And then it's also natural again for the protectors to take us away from those parts as best they can. But all of that keeps us from spending a lot of time in self. Let me say that uh, in many cases, it's not necessarily our burdened parts that are, are scared, that our parts do have good reason often now to be afraid that, that uh, there are a lot of potential minefields looming. We may lose our jobs or our businesses or our, our dear family members or ourselves actually. And, I'm, and many of us have watched life savings go down the drain in the stock market crash. So as Abraham Maslow talked about, it's very hard to become self or work on even being, becoming self-actualized when uh, your basic needs are in peril. And that's some of where we are right now. And we're not used to this. We're not used to having our lives be out of this control, you know, be this much out of control. Um, most of us had a feeling like, okay, we're gonna die at some point and we can't control that. But short of that, you know, if we make the right choices, uh, we'll basically be okay. And, and right now you can't really feel that way. On the other hand, there's always self. There's always what I call the capital I in the storm. There's that on, beneath the roiling waves, there is this sort of calm depth that's there regardless of our situation. So if we can get our parts to separate enough, we can access at least some of those eight C's. And again, that's some of my goal today. But there are other obstacles. So being with your fear, for example, in this loving way is a challenge when everybody's telling you to, to be brave and overcome it. I read a piece uh, this week by Jean Houston and uh, she wrote a line about this crisis. Quote, on the other side of it, we'll look back and realize that we were part of an epic time in history when caring triumphed over fear and goodness prevailed. So the idea is that as a, the hero triumphs over fear, which usually means exiling fear. So Winston Churchill at a time like this said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. To that I say, really the only thing we have to fear is the, uh, is the contempt of our fear. Because if instead 
we can go to the young parts of us from which the fear emanates with love and comfort them uh, and not be dominated so much by the, the macho parts that would triumph over fear, um, then actually we can heal a lot of things and we can help the fear uh, and we can access, and then when the fear is calm and helped, then we can access the courage of self and self just has courage. It's not something that you have to manufacture to triumph over anything. So we can use this time to follow the trail ads and uh, often they'll lead to parts that are stuck in terrible places in the past and we can go to those parts and and do some healing with them and uh, take them out of where they're stuck and help them unburden and all that, the whole nine yards or the, how many steps we have in IFS can be a very uh, good healing opportunity as a wake up call right now. But it may also be that uh, the f intense fear we're having doesn't come from a burdened place. It's realistic in some ways. And so that's more of a challenge because this is a scary time and you can't necessarily reassure parts that bad things aren't gonna happen because they might. So what do you do in, in this situation? Well, as I was thinking about that, it reminded me of a time about three years ago, I was visiting my brother, Michael, uh, and he has a place on the island of Kauai on this beautiful bay. And uh, my wife, Jean, and I were down at the water and uh, there were really big surf, really big waves, but I thought it'd be safe to just wade in the shallows. And so much to her chagrin, I ignored her warnings and I started to just walk around up to my, you know, knees most of the time. And then all of, all of a sudden, I took a step and I must have stepped off of a drop off. And I was suddenly being pulled out to sea by this riptide. And I didn't know how to handle it, <laughs> being uh, not a native Hawaiian. And so I just kept trying to swim back to the shore or swim to a reef that wasn't far off and was getting nowhere and I uh, was getting further and further pulled out and more and more tired. And then I would lay on my back to try and catch my breath, but the waves were so big that uh, water would get in my mouth and I'd start to choke. So that wasn't a, a solution that was available. So uh, at some point I was getting so tired that uh, it looked bad, like I was gonna die. And I heard these parts screaming in my head, we're gonna die, we're gonna die. And I went to them and said, okay, uh, but you know, I tried to hold them and comfort them, but I couldn't say we're not gonna die because I didn't know that. What I could say is if we die, I'll be with you. And that calmed them down and uh, and then sort of in the nick of time, my sister-in-law, Patty, came down to the beach and saw me struggling and frantically pointed me to swim toward the big waves, which was counterintuitive to me. And uh, I just had enough energy to do that. And then the waves kind of ushered me in. And uh, so I'm here talking today because of that. And later I learned that a guy had died in a similar situation at that same bay couple days earlier. So I feel very lucky. And, uh, and it was a lesson in self leadership in a sense, in the sense that even in that kind of a context, it's really helpful to parts to, to help them and hold them and help them trust you, regardless of what's going to happen. And my parts are used to that they I've spent many, many years uh, getting them to trust me, to to not have to take over and to let me handle things, even scary things sometimes. And in most contexts, they're, they're good at that. There's a few, 
I won't mention right now, um, where they still tend to take over and it's a struggle for me to get them to step back. But in, I had built up enough trust in that kind of a context that when I asked them to separate, they would. And so the point of that is, this is a scary time and it's still very valuable to our parts for, the, for uh, them to give us the space to actually help them. And uh, yeah. Yeah, so even in the face of death, it's possible to hold your parts. It's far more difficult because it's less likely that they'll separate. And again, it's less likely they'll separate now than in other kinds of circumstances. Um, but it's possible. And it may not lead to the kind of life-saving luck I had, but it's always better to face your challenges in life from a place of courage, clarity, and confidence than from your scared, dissociating, or impulsive parts. So that's my sort of pitch to your parts, to, to just give you a chance. Because um, once you do access a bit more self, you may find that uh, the same thing that's true for the earth when the pollution stops, that you sort of automatically begin to heal. And that the extreme parts that have dominated your life and that were elevated to that dominance by what it takes to make it in our culture are forced to step back now. And you might find that you love the emergence of other parts that know how to play and how to be creative or how to enjoy nature. It's like the fish that return to Venice's canals. These parts are coming back now if they're given the green light to. And you might find that you want to make changes in your life so you can make room for them. So as I mentioned before, the more self we bring to this crisis, the more likely its lessons will be learned at all levels the planetary, the country, the, and uh, the individual. Rilke said, uh, quote, let me not squander the hour of my pain, end quote. So rather than squandering this one, let's use it to change many layers of the world we live in. So all that is an excerpt of what I've been writing recently. I, I put out the whole paper at some point. And uh, it sets the stage for the next exercise I'd like to try, which is um, to have you actually work with some of these parts if they're willing. So let's get comfortable again and focus inside. And earlier we did a kind of survey of the parts of you that are triggered by this event. And now, get a sense of what part you want to focus on exclusively for a little while and work with. And uh, if it is one of these terrified exiles, then just be sure you have permission to do that. And if not, then, then go to the parts that are afraid to let you and see what their fear is and see if you can get permission. So once you have a part in mind, then go ahead and focus on it and find it in your body or around your body and notice how you feel toward it. And at this point, you may have a lot of extreme feelings about it, which is understandable. It's harder now to access self, but just see if for the next few minutes, doesn't have to be a long time, that those parts that are giving those extreme feelings 
could relax just a little bit. They can jump back when you're done, but just ask them to let you have enough space to get to know some of these parts or the parts you're focused on. We're not gonna give it more power to overwhelm you. We're not gonna, we're just gonna get to know it and maybe even help it not be so scared or not, whatever it's doing, not have to do it so much and get it to trust that it's not alone, to trust that you're there. So just take a second and see if the parts that have extreme feelings about the target part could relax a little and, and let you access more self and come more into your body. And if that's not happening, then don't keep going toward the target part. Instead, focus on one of these others that won't separate and just see what it needs, see what, what its fears are and what it needs from you to trust you more to handle the target part. And if you can get to a point of being at least curious about the original target part, then go ahead and, and just see what it wants you to know about itself and uh, why it's either so upset or why it's trying to protect you, whichever part it is. Just stay a little bit curious for a little while and see what it wants you to know. And as you're getting to know it, see if you can help it get to know you also. That at least right now, it's not alone and you're there with it. And if, if it, you actually feel it, it's sincere that you do care about it and you want to help it. And if you want, you can also ask how old it thinks you are. And if it thinks you're different from your actual age, then update it or let it know that you're not that age and that you might be more capable than the part thought.
and then see if the part seems to trust that you care about it. And if it doesn't, ask it more about why it doesn't and what you can do to build that trust. And if that's true, you just want to stay there. But if it does seem to trust you, then go ahead and ask what it wants you to know about where it got these feelings or beliefs in the past. And again, don't think, just wait and see what comes to you. And if nothing's coming, that's okay. It might be that this part isn't stuck in the past, that it's just scared because it's a scary present. And let it know you get that and that you're gonna do more to try and help it during this scary time. But if you are getting something about where it might be frozen in time, then just tell it to keep going until it feels like you really get what happened and how bad it was. And then if it does feel like you're getting that, then see if you can go into that time, that earlier time and be with that uh, younger version of yourself in the way that he or she needed you at that time. And, uh, and see what that part might need you to do with her or for her back there or him. And go ahead and do that.
And then at some point you can see if the part's ready to leave that time and place with you and come to a safe, comfortable place, which again, might not be the present because this is scary, but it could be a fantasy place. You know. And then see if the part <clears throat> is interested in unloading any feelings or beliefs it's been carrying all this time. And again, that might be more challenging now with this scary present, but you can just see and see if it can give anything up to light or water or fire, or wind or earth, however it wants to send it out of its body. If it was willing to or able to unburden anything, just see how it's doing now. And if it wants to invite qualities into its body now. And then finally, you can bring in any other parts to check this out and see how things are a little bit different and just see how they react. And so come on back whenever you're ready. And let me say a few things about that. Um, you know, I kind of sped, <laughs> sped through those steps. Uh, so it may be, may well be that you didn't get very far. In fact, maybe your parts wouldn't separate at all. <clears throat> and I really don't want you to feel like you failed if that's true. This is a scary time and uh, it's not easy to get parts to 
cooperate at times like this. And, and it takes a lot more work than the 15 minutes that I just put in. But uh, I suspect some people were able to do it. And uh, it's, some, it's the kind of work I've been trying to do on my own, or sometimes with Gene, uh, the last couple of weeks, being inside most all the time. I'm turned 70 this year, so I'm uh, high risk. Not only that, but because also uh, I have a history of severe childhood asthma and had an asthma incident, episode, something like that, earlier this year. So I'm trying to be really careful and uh, um, and really, you know, socially distant, emotionally not distant, but, uh, and, you know, also try to use the wake up call personally, because uh, when everything had to cancel, I've canceled any travel for months in advance now, there are parts of me that were quite relieved and uh, parts that I'd just been pushing aside and, and uh, not listening to basically. And uh, so during these two weeks, I've had much more time to spend with them and to actually do some of this healing with them and meditating to access more self and also to get to know Gene again <laughs> uh, in, different, in a deeper way. And so for all of that, I'm grateful. And I do expect uh, that it's going to lead to some lasting changes. I, I don't plan to not travel anymore, but I plan to not travel as much and do more online. And that's one of the things that may wind up being a blessing also, because we have successfully moved a lot of the training programs on, online so far successfully and um, in doing so it may be true it may be possible that we can meet a lot of the demand because i know a lot of you had a lot of trouble getting into level one trainings um and uh and the, the in-person trainings require a lot more logistical stuff that make it harder to organize them and make it so that we can't have as many but if, if we did at least some of the, the level one trainings, some portion of the level one training online, it would simplify things a lot and we could do a lot more of them. So that's uh, what we're playing with. And my experience, just like today, I think, is that uh, it can be quite effectively learned online you don't necessarily have the same level of community connection. And, and uh, during this crisis, we hope to find other ways to, to connect the community, but, uh, but it still can be quite effective, I think. So anyway, we're trying to, to use this crisis as an opportunity too, and to, to experiment with different ways of being and I see, I see in the, the chat that many of you are happy to hear this. So that's great. Um, so I wanna close with one more meditation. So let's all get relaxed again and comfortable in our chairs. And this time, as you notice your parts, invite them to separate more. So rather than getting to know them right now, we're just going to ask them to relax and open more space and let you get more into your body. Because when they're activated, they take up a lot of space in your body. So if they're willing to do that, you'll notice palpable shifts as they pull their energy out. And you'll also notice feeling more embodied, which means you can feel your sensations more, you feel 
Maybe some vibrating energies running through your body. Feel more grounded. Because when they let you embody, it's comforting to them because it's hard for them to sense your presence when they keep you out of your body. And they have the power to do that. So we, we're inviting them to let you really be in your body, even in this time of crisis. And just see how that feels. And if they're allowing that even to a small degree, then it may be possible for you to extend compassion to them throughout your system, even to parts you don't know very well, or even to parts that have caused you a lot of trouble in your life. Just extend from your heart this compassionate energy throughout your system. And the calm of yourself also is very useful right now. And let them know again, you're not young. You can help them. And you have a lot of courage that they might not even know about. And just see how they react. And if they've sensed your compassion and calm, it's likely they relax more, which allows you to feel more compassion and calm in a virtuous cycle kind of way. And then I'm gonna invite you to extend that compassion through your body to the earth. Compassion and love to the earth for how it has nurtured us. and given us beauty. And see if it also feels right and sincere to extend an apology to the earth for how you personally I've mistreated it at times. Even the greenest of us have done that at times. And then a collective apology for how we as a species have treated the earth.
And then as the last part of this meditation, see if now you can extend the same compassion, calm, clarity, courage to the leaders of the world. Because they need those qualities to help their protectors relax and give them more access to self. So that our leaders can learn the lessons of this wake up call. And our leaders can feel the pain in a way they didn't before of what our policies have caused to the people in this country and other countries. So again, like an individual who was dominated by striving parts finally feels the pain of the parts that have been neglected inside. and vows to do something about that, rather than continue on this suicidal path toward unrestrained growth. When the time feels right, you can shift your focus back out here. <sighs> so, um, yeah, we've all got lessons to learn. This is a great opportunity and it is terrifying. And, uh, but the, the lesson plan is in your parts and their burdens and just getting them to trust you a little more. So, um, yeah, so let's keep finding ways to keep doing things like this and staying connected. And as I say, um, there'll be more of these to come, but I think there are other ways we can do this and maybe meeting in smaller groups than 5,000 at a time. And it's important to know that 5,000 people doing this simultaneously can have actually quite a big effect. I didn't get to say enough about that, but I totally, totally in my bones know that when you access self and when you help your clients access self, it isn't just individually having an impact, it ripples. Self is a field. And the more self we bring, the more it ripples to all these other levels that actually will create healing. So, um, so what we just did, I think is really, really important and, and valuable. And so let's all keep doing it. Okay. Uh, I'll see you around. <laughs>